Hey guys, it's Stella. Welcome back to my channel, Fly with Stella. Today I am adding another video to my series, Becoming a Flight Attendant. This video explores the other side of being a flight attendant, and it's appropriately titled, The Cons of Being a Flight Attendant. For me personally, being a flight attendant, the benefits by far outweigh the negatives. I think it's an awesome job. I've been having a lot of fun. I get a lot, a lot of questions and concerns about the actual job. So I thought I'd do this video and just kind of address my top 10 cons that I've kind of gathered just from experience and then also discussing it with my other flight attendant friends, the struggles of what a new hire flight attendant will experience. So let's get started with number one con of being a flight attendant, the starting salary. I would have to say that this is by far number one. We only get paid for the hours that we are actually behind the door and the door is closed and we are flying. So if I have a trip that is a nine hour flight from JFK to Brazil, and it takes me about an hour to get ready, an hour before to get to the airport, and then I sign in an hour before my actual flight takes off, I'm not getting paid for any of that, nor am I getting paid for boarding. I'm only getting paid once everybody is seated, seatbelts fastened, overhead bins are closed, and that door is shut. That is when I start getting paid for my job and my duties as a flight attendant. And then, once that door opens, I get about 15 minutes of pay after the door opens for the passengers to deplane, and then I'm not getting paid anymore. So, I might be spending the night in Brazil and not leaving for another day or so. I'm getting per diem, which is very low, but not actual flying hours. So I would say for the amount of time that you dedicate to the job versus what you're actually getting paid, it's a huge difference and a lot of new hire flight attendants struggle with this. Number two, reserve or on call. So when you are a new hire flight attendant, with any airline, you're gonna be asked to serve reserve, or they might call it something different, but it's essentially being on call. Some airlines, it's only for a few days or a few hours at a time. My airline, it's one month reserve, one month line month. So on my reserve months, I do not know what trips I'm getting, I only know when I'm working, and these chunks are 24 hour work times. So if I start at midnight, I'll go all the way to midnight the next day and that is a, tw a one day of reserve. So it's very frustrating and I don't know what I'm gonna get. It's hard to plan anything if I go to a movie or if I go out and then you know, I get called, I have to go back, change, and get ready for my on-call reserve. Number three, getting to the airport, you guys. <laughs> This might not seem like a con to many of you, but this is the hardest part for me of the job. Once you get to the airport, the trip just kind of flows. You're taken to the plane, you're taken to your destination, you get the shuttle onto the hotel, you go to the hotel, you catch the shuttle in the morning, but physically getting to the airport is one of the most difficult things and the most stressful. If your sign-in is at 8 a.m., you cannot get there at 8.05 or 8.01 or 8.02. You have to be signed in and ready to go before 8 a.m. or whatever time your sign-in is at. So for me, getting to the airport, it's so stressful. There's weather, there's traffic, there's no taxis, there's no Uber, there's no parking. It's the hardest part of the job and a huge con for a lot of my new hire flight attendant friends. Number four, dealing with upset passengers. This is a con because this is bound to happen, guys. Sometimes you're gonna have those awesome trips where everything just goes right, but then other times there's gonna be delays, there's gonna be weather, there's gonna be a passenger who comes on and has just missed their flight or is going you know, to a funeral or something is going on with them and they're gonna be upset. This is bound to happen. It's gonna be kind of a damper on you and around the passengers around them and even for the passengers. So my number one tip and the best thing to do when you have to deal with an upset passenger is to just listen to them. 
honestly. Most of the time when they're upset, they want you to hear their story. They want you to know what's going on so you know that they're upset. And that's fine. I don't mind listening. I sympathize with them. And if there's anything I can do to help, then by all means, I'm gonna do the best that I can do to help. But you are gonna get these passengers and sometimes you're just not gonna know what to say or do, so the best thing to do is just listen. Number five, it's gonna get lonely, guys. <laughs> Number five con is being lonely. You guys are gonna have to adapt to being independent and being on your own. At first, it can be very difficult. You get to a destination, you're all excited, you wanna go out with the crew, and everybody has plans, and you're left in your hotel room by yourself trying to decide if you should venture out on your own, or if you just should stay in the hotel because you're scared to go out there, or you're just sad because you're alone. You guys, all new hires go through this and it's not that bad. Be excited to go out on your own and go exploring, or if it's nighttime and you can't go out, watch a movie, enjoy the peacefulness of just being with yourself. This kind of ties into number six con, is the job can be very hard on personal relationships. So at the beginning, your friends and family and significant other are very used to you being around. They're used to you getting home at six o'clock, calling them during your lunch breaks, but when you're a new hire flight attendant, your whole world is turned upside down and you're in the air during your lunch or your dinner or you're on a 10 hour flight and there's no way you can call any of your friends and family during that time. Or when you land, you might land in a foreign country and your phone doesn't have long distance calling like that. So you're just going to have to learn other ways to communicate with them and Honestly, communication is the best key to keep any of your relationships going strong. It is gonna be an adjustment phase during the beginning, but you will get over it and you'll get your groove and you'll figure out FaceTime and you'll get your international calling plan all set up. <laughs> Water break. <laughs> Number seven, con. Difficult to maintain a, a good workout routine and healthy eating habits. You guys, I can personally tell you I have suffered for this. When I first started, I was grabbing bagels and burritos in the airport and eating airplane food and not worried about what I was putting into my body and then getting to the hotel and passing out because I was exhausted from the high altitude and the different time zones. I can tell you that it's very hard in the beginning to adjust and to keep your workout routine going. You're not gonna be getting to go to yoga Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 to 9 a.m. It's just not gonna happen like that anymore. Your schedule is gonna be so irregular and some days you're gonna be flying on during your, your normal workout time and some days you're gonna be sleeping. So at the beginning, the best thing to do is to try to pack your lunch. Just try to pack as many healthy snacks as you can so you're not munching on food that's not good for you or grabbing a big burger in the airport. You can wait till you get to your hotel and seek out healthier options. And then when my best tip too is when you first get to your layover hotel is to immediately change and go work out before you go explore the city, before you do anything, because that way you'll still get your workout in. Number eight con is delays. So like I said in the beginning with the salary, we are only paid when the door is shut and the customers are seated and stowed. So if you guys as customers are experiencing delays, us as flight attendants are also experiencing delays and we're giving our time to you guys and the company and we are not getting paid for it. So the number one thing they told us to do in training is to be palm trees. You just gotta flow with the flow and weather and things. <laughs> it's not always gonna be perfect. Your flight's not gonna always take off on time. But a lot of, a lot of new hire flight attendants, we get so frustrated because we're like, why is it delayed? I wanna get going, I wanna get paid. You know, I want to get to Seattle at this time because I'm meeting friends. But you just have to know that delays always happen and they're just inevitable. So you kind of just got to 
go with it. Number nine, jet lag. <laughs> you guys, as a new hire flight attendants, will definitely experience jet lag. I live in New York, but I have family in California, so I'm always going back and forth. I have a fiance in Germany, so I'm going back and forth. I live in New York, and then I'm flying to Europe, and then I'm going to South America. There's, you're always in different time zones, whether it's from the East Coast to the West Coast, or from the West Coast to Europe. It's just inevitable that you will be in and out of different time zones, and you'll just have to adjust. Get sleep when you can, and my advice is that if you get to a destination you've never been before, and you really want to go explore, but you're exhausted, take that time to sleep. More than likely, during your flight attendant career, you will get you will get to go back to that destination and you can explore then. Or get a little nap in and then go out. Even if you have to miss meeting time with the crew, you can meet up with them later, get their numbers and meet at their second destination. But take care of yourself and get your rest. And number 10 con is crash pads. <laughs> I personally have lived in a crash pad and I can tell you it's not so bad. It's not so bad. I've met some awesome girls. I had some really good times exploring the city with these girlfriends of mine and getting to share experiences of being new hire flight attendants. It was pretty awesome. But the thing with crash pads is they're, to what they are, if you guys don't know, is basically they're apartments or homes that are near the airports that more than likely are shared between flight attendants and pilots. There can be six flight attendants in one crash pad or 12. The thing is, everybody's rotating in and out, so you never really know who's going to be at the crash pad, and more than likely, never will all of you be there at the same time. But and they're cheap, so we love them because we don't make a lot of money at the beginning and we can all shove ourselves into these crash pads and we're never really there because we're flying. But you also really never feel like it's really your home. You never really have a space to call your own and when you do come home, more than likely there is gonna be somebody else there. So you can't just unwind and you know be by yourself and do whatever you want. You've got somebody else there and more than likely they're going to want to talk to you and how was your day or what happened, you know, during this or let me tell you what happened with this flight attendant or this passenger. So you're always going to be kind of alert and somebody's going to be there. So crash pads can be really awesome and convenient if you're using them more for just commuting. You know, you live in another state, you commute in the night before and then you fly out the next day to do your actual trip and then maybe when you get back you spend one night and then you go back home. That can be a great idea and a good concept with the crash pad. But if you're living there, it's just really difficult to get a sense of real life because you can't have friends over. You have to always be constantly with your roommates. So Crash pads can just be difficult. I do recommend them when you're first starting out, but then get some get some friends, get a good group going, and move out and get your own apartment, your own room, and your own space. So guys, those have been my top 10 cons of being a flight attendant, being a new hire flight attendant. It is part of a series, Becoming a Flight Attendant. So I do have other videos for you guys to check out, and I am also constantly adding more videos. So if you guys have any comments or have any questions, please, please, please comment below. Also, if you need more personal one-on-one -on -one advice, please request to be my friend and follow me on Instagram and send me a personal message. I do my absolute best to answer all of the messages that come in. Might not answer you the first day because I get a lot, but I will answer you and I will start a dialogue with you if you need help. And especially if you're going on a face-to-face -face interview or have a video interview or something really important coming up, please message me and I will give you those words of encouragement. Again, I am Stella. This is my channel, Fly With Stella. Thank you guys so much and I will see you next time.